Survivor Specialist Phil and Alexa are back with another one of our season 40 winner or not even winner retrospectives, just tell alls. I keep calling it the winner retrospective. That's what I was used to saying beforehand. But with another one of our tell alls, our fourth one of the season today, we are joined by Ethan Zahn of Survivor Africa and Survivor Winners at War. Ethan, thanks so much for joining us. We're excited to have you here. This is going to be awesome. Thanks for coming on. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Forgot Survivor All-Star, which was in between Survivor Africa and Survivor yeah. Winners at War. Specialist, what's going I, on? You know what's terrible, too? The Last final night- winner to Survive All-Stars, too. I, I, I pretty much defended you. Last night, we did a podcast, and I defended you for about 10 minutes in wow. your All-Stars game and how good your All-Stars game was. So for me to forget it right now, I think I just got it all out of my system last <laughs> night, and it just it just didn't come out tonight. Well, I think if both you and my mom think I played well in All Stars, so like there's two of you now. Hey, you know what? We're the only two whose opinions matter. So that's that is all true. you should be listening. That is to. true. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> but uh, but this this will be a lot of fun. You're actually the third person we're having on from Survivor Africa. We've had T Bird on in the past. We had Lex come on to talk all about you. Uh, Lex Excellent. and T Bird both came on to talk all about you before this season started. So I love you know, when other people talk about me and I don't know what they're saying. That just makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. <laughs> How was it, Alexa? Was it positive or was it negative? It was all positive. Yeah. I don't think T-Bert could say anything bad about anybody if she wanted to. So. <laughs> uh, Ethan didn't even comment on that. He just smiled. I think yeah. that means T-Bert could definitely say bad things if she wanted to. We could all say bad things about each other if we wanted to, but uh, some people choose not to. Yeah, exactly. Well, there you go. And so you're coming in here. After, uh, you're about to do an anime after this, too. So you're about I to am. Out. You're about to have a long night ahead of you i mean for anybody who's listening to this tomorrow or the next day obviously his ama already happened but he's he's got a long night he's doing this right beforehand i guess he wants to get all the survivor out of the way first but uh you know what's it been like since being back in this community i mean you were i mean you were huge you know what the first three winners we always say are like the the really big winners of survivor everybody remembers them come back for all stars everybody remembers you from that and then you know you took 32 seasons before you came back again what's it like <laughs> being back man it was a shell shock that's for sure you know i definitely took uh yeah 16 years off from the game of survivor but uh it's to be honest, this part of it for me has been really fun. The last time I played there, there was no social media. You know, there was no Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, none of that stuff. So the our ability to like interact with fans and like see things happening real time and see opinions and thoughts and comments. For me, it's been really fun. It's been really exciting um, because the only other time, back, you know, back in the day, and you'll hear me say that, like you can put up a little ticker, like back in the day, back in the day, back in the day. So we're out three already, but back in the day, the only time we saw fans is like we have to show up in person. So this has just been really fun and rewarding for me. Uh, keep being back in the community. And you, you did those letters from the edge all season, and those were those were super funny. I think everybody loved that. So you, you really did a great job with the social media game this year. I appreciate that. You know, people play. There's definitely a pregame thing, which I knew nothing about of it. <laughs> there's a in the game thing, and then there's a post game thing, right? So like. Maybe I can win the post game, right? We'll figure it out. <laughs> I don't know how you win the post game, but maybe you can. I mean, but we've we've seen it happen before. I mean, you think about, you know, when they did second chances and all of that, you know, Kelly Wentworth won social media in between Sam Wandel Sir and second chances. That's why she's back on second chances. So you never know. You keep making these appearances. I don't know if you have the plans to play again if they ask you, but I mean, oh, right God. now. If that's the case, I'm going to shut down all my social media across the board. <laughs> You'll never see me again if this is what like leads into getting on the show. Are you, so are you, uh, is that, is that your way of being like, you know what? Season 40 was my, my, my swan song there. That's it. Season 40, I think was the perfect bookend to the amazing life that Survivor has given to me. And uh, yeah, I think I, I think I gave it my best shot. I had a wonderful time loving what's going on right now, but I think that's enough. I think it's mm -hmm. enough for me. The game has changed so much in a way that uh, for me, it was a little bit unrecognizable in some parts, mm -hmm. but uh, so yeah, I think I'm good with the way it's all played out. And how was it just hitting the beach on those first couple days? I mean, you have, you you have this amazing confessional where you're just like I'm gonna throw up. I have no idea what's going on. What was it What was it like to walk into a game that you thought you knew and then have it be completely different? Well, I mean, let's be honest. Like, I knew what was going on. Right. It, the the pace was a little bit quicker, but 
the game of survivor you know it's difficult but it's like not that hard to understand i understand what was going on and what was happening around me but the pace at which the game was going on uh was you know pretty rapid and that was something for me to get used to but hitting the beach yeah i was super excited you know this is uh like tony said that the super bowl of super bowls right so when you get there on the beach your heart is just pumping you're seeing all the people that i've watched on tv over the past 20 years as well so for me it's like i'm fanboying on some people yet i'm like thinking oh i've already been here and then i'm watching jeff Probst's expression and he's pretty psyched about it all so it was just the, the overall the overall experience was overwhelming at that moment uh just for everything it represented in my life so to, to bring that in and then after performing a challenge like that right off the bat on the start it was like ah what's going on yeah, and that and i i think it's like so interesting because you said like you knew what was going on and like from the edit it was like oh ethan's over his head and just being that you were like a competitive athlete a professional athlete your entire like life so that that just creates like a different sense of competitive nature too and i was like ethan knows what's going on here it's just that the last time he played there weren't idols you guys the crazy twist in all stars is that there were three tribes like think about that now we see three tribes every season pretty much and that was the crazy twist of all stars so well the crazy twist twist of africa was mm -hmm. a tribe swap whoa the crazy. first ever in the history of the game you know we sent three people to their tribe they sent three people to our tribe and like that was like a huge deal and it actually was a huge deal at that time in survivor africa Absolutely. And I, I mean, I still think today I, I rewatched Survivor Africa two weeks ago and I still think like that's probably the best twist they've ever done because it was it's the simplest thing that we should all see coming. Yeah. And that, because we're so used to it and just the look on Lex and Big Tom and especially Silas, the look <laughs> on their faces is like iconic. I mean, that's one of the best moments in the history of the show. And it happened 37 seasons. Ago. Right. I know. I, I feel this back in the day. You need to preface that with back I in do. the day. I do. Nice reference already. Yeah. Oh. Right. We, we used to walk to tribal council uphill <laughs> both ways in the snow, barefoot back in the day. <laughs> in now the they drop us off in a boat or a car. And it's just like, eh. You know, they yeah. put a lay around our neck when we arrive, you know, it's <laughs> animals go back in the cages. It's just a piece of this, cake these days. What it, what it sounds like is it sounds like Ethan was like, this isn't as authentic as I remember it. I just want out. Everybody, let me out of here. I'm done. Yeah, just get me to the edge no of extinction as quick as possible because that's the closest to Africa that this game has to offer these days. <laughs> I love that. I absolutely love that. And it's that, I mean, from what we saw, Edge of Extinction seemed as horrible as advertised in terms of just difficulty how was that just 180 wise from the regular island that when you first started and then when you ended up leaving yeah i mean it's two different games completely yeah. and uh so you feel a little bit separated from the real game uh because it's basically purgatory it's you're living in a world between life and death in the game of survivor so mm -hmm. part of you like just wants to have that drive and that competitiveness and that that energy to keep going but then like you realize all that effort, it, it doesn't necessarily add up to the same outcomes as it would in like the real game. So mm -hmm. strategy is not as cutthroat on the edge from, from my experience, it could have been going on around me. Um, you know, there aren't that many challenges and the challenges that do happen, they're sparse and they're fairly quick, except for the law challenge. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, um, so like the constant pressure, anxiety, stress, you know, running around, looking around, it's not as present on the edge of extinction from my mm -hmm. experience. Yeah. And so you, I mean, you brought up the, the log challenge, which we'll talk about. I mean, we're only 10 minutes in, but we might as well talk about it now because even though it was after you'd been voted out of the game, it was obviously a huge moment. And, you know, for somebody like me, I was, nine years old i think the first time you played and awesome. and but but like i was a soccer i was playing soccer i thought i was going to be like you know a professional defender and so like when i was watching you i was like wow like that's the guy i'm rooting for i was rooting for you and lex the entire time and it's interesting because like back then like you were like the the really athletic like challenge piece. and now we see you you know almost 20 years later and you're still athletic and in shape and everything but that challenge just like really took it out of you and like what was that experience like and was that just like way harder than anything you expected to have happen out there yeah it was a brutal challenge just in general the challenge was difficult and uh you know i thought i was cut out for it but my body just didn't work <laughs> well mm -hmm. at that moment and you know I, i'm not going to say it was because of the health challenges i went through and that's why that happened to me however on that day it just yeah i totally just 
my body wasn't working. It was day nine. You know, none of us had been sleeping, eating water. I was dehydrated. Went out too fast trying to keep mm -hmm. up with Natalie, thinking I was that big, strong guy. And uh, it ended up just kind of not going in my favor that day. And so I think it was on log 16 that, you know, I ended up uh, passing out and uh, they called in the medical. And so, yeah, it was humbling. It was a little bit embarrassing. And, you know, I've said this uh, before, but on the flip side of that, it was pretty neat in the sense that I thought like Danny and Natalie and Amber would literally just like kick me when I'm down. We're competing for $2 million. There's fire tokens floating around someplace, but instead like the opposite happened. And they kind of just, yeah, they picked me up. They rallied behind me. They walked up that last leg of the race. And that was like, that was pretty neat. Like, you know, compassion and empathy transcending the game for that like brief moment. Mm -hmm. And I think Survivor did a pretty good job wrapping that story up and uh making it into you know that was like my moment of the season i feel and uh it was pretty neat it's pretty good to feel that way go ahead alexa you, i was yeah. just gonna ask so it was log 16 about how long do you think the entire process took i think i'm thinking it took i, I think it took around between five and six hours that's my guess um for me, at least. For the others, they finished earlier. But for me, it took a little bit longer. Uh, but I think around five hours, five and a half hours. Oh my gosh. That's that's brutal. And and so I know you like you had said, like, you know, those people who helped you out, and you had Natalie and Amber and Danny. Do you think that there was something? I I, I know Natalie's not an old schooler, but was there something with the old school? being there on the edge and seeing like another fellow old schooler? Like, was there kind of an you're in this together? mentality there yeah for that i don't think it was an old school new school thing at that moment but the in this together mentality was that that what that is what it was mm -hmm. which we are the only four people there we're kind of screwed for, for you know we know what's about to come to us and we just you know know we had a we had a really difficult challenge ahead of us and it was yes we were competing but we no one could really get the other person's fire token. So you're only competing against yourself. So therefore you had that group mentality and we we're all cheering each other on the whole way. Like every time Amber passed me, she says something positive or smiled. Same with Danny, Natalie, pick it up. Come on, Ethan, you got this. So all that stuff was happening. Whereas, uh, you know, so there's this, there was this undercurrent of camaraderie in history and like just bottom line is we're humans. We liked each other. We don't want to see each other suffer and get injured. So the game just was secondary. You know, we were just all wanted each other to finish in a, in a good, successful way, I, I feel. Yeah. And and so, like, when you played in Survivor Africa, Survivor Africa is well known for having some of the most brutal challenges. That boulder challenge where you're yeah. literally crushing <laughs> Kim that. Johnson. It's like who, <laughs> like, she's now, she's now flattened out like a cartoon character. But you, now newer school seasons really haven't had brutal challenges. You've had a couple that are difficult, but normally it ends with a puzzle and there might be a little bit of a strenuous part. We saw Alec Merlino have to stand there and also listen to Christian, which I guess is difficult. But for <laughs> you, were you expecting to have to compete in a challenge like this? going out there or were you thinking that okay i'm a little bit older but most of the challenges i'll still be able to adapt to i don't know i was completely expecting i i was expecting the most difficult challenge like they would pluck the hardest challenge from each season and throw it at us i was not disappointed but a little confused that they just kind of went with the same old thing that we've seen before you know from season 38 i was hoping they would just blow this out of the water i mean don't get me the challenge are absolutely spectacular but I thought we would see something a little bit different in some of the areas. And they were a lot, they were a lot quicker than what I remember. You know, the, the endurance challenges on this season, you know, hugging the pole or standing on that wobbly thing in the water. Like from my experience, like those went forever back in the day, you know? <laughs> and then like when they came back, I'm like, Oh my God, how long did that last? They're like, Oh, 20 minutes. Like, Oh, 20 minutes. I granted it's difficult and it's hard, but those long stand on the pole for 24 hour challenges just don't exist anymore. So how did you, going into the season, how did you train, whether that be challenge-wise or starvation-wise, especially <laughs> expecting these crazy, crazy hard challenges? Yeah, I had a pretty good, you know, workout routine. Like, well, first of all, when I got the call, I'm, I'm calling you right now from New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. So when we got the call in January, it's winter outside, you know, <laughs> the water's frozen, there's snow up to your knees, like, you're not doing anything fun on the outdoors. So my wife and I, we made the choice and uh, we moved down to uh, South to for a couple months so I could be outside and like 
run and hike and you know i i learned how to build fires again i my wife was hiding shit in the forest for me to find on some days you know like <laughs> i was tying knots um i was doing balancing drills i was working out like i had a trainer i saw a shrink i read books on lip reading and body language you know i read a book on like personality types so i'm like if i'm gonna do this and i'm coming out of retirement after 16 years and this game is like something a lot different i just wanted i made it my job i'm like this is my job to get ready to go play survivor maybe i'll be my last hurrah maybe i'll do well you never know but i just wanted to like give the respect that this game deserves from my perspective and plus i wasn't in the greatest shape in my life yeah. <laughs> at that moment also so like hibernating up to some, I like, <laughs> yeah. crunch time. like no matter how old you are like cramming the night before a big event or the couple wins is like what had happened so yeah i had to get myself ready fit fitness uh fitness was a big part of it for me. It sounds like the one thing you forgot to do though was like call up Sandra, call up Yule, call up. It sounds like that's the thing. You did all the physical stuff. You did everything like that, but you forgot to get on the phone with everybody because I don't know if you know this or not, but nowadays if there's a returning season, all 20 people are calling each other on the phone before. Ah, uh, tell me about it. Literally, that probably would have the best would have been the best thing I could have done was to do pregame alliances. I mean, for my uh, I don't know. From my perspective, it looks like there there was a lot of stuff going on before the game that helped impact what was going on during the game. And so, you know, from my, you know, when you get cast on this show, Africa, All Stars, and even this time, they're like, do not talk to anyone. It's not okay. You know, you got this contract. That was a rule. So I'm like, yeah, like Africa and All Stars, there's no way I wouldn't call anyone. I would have called no one. I didn't call Lex or Tom. And I was dating like half the cast anyway. At All Stars, <laughs> I didn't call any of them. So like, you know, there there was a situation where I should have. I just didn't know it was part of the game these days. And when I showed up there and started to realize people were working together, and how do you connect those dots when you edit the show together? Because it just so that was a little disappointing for me. And I just wish I had known. I really do because it would have been a game changer as you could see i mean all the old schoolers went out first whether it was organized or just random i don't know i saw what happened in all stars you know they voted the winners off first as well or tried to at least and so i think uh i think it was yeah it, it was disappointing and unfortunate because i just followed the rules that mm -hmm. survivor and cbs told me to follow yet no one else followed those rules you gotta you got cheat man and and, and it, it does show though because the people who did a little bit better. I mean, Boston Rob lasted a little bit longer and Sandra would have lasted longer had she not given up the idol. They were in the mix recently. You know, yeah, they oh, kind of yeah. knew what buttons you could push and what not. Whereas Amber goes out as the first old scorer to go. Then Danny, then you, and even Parv. Like, you don't really know which buttons you're pushing because you haven't played. I mean, even in Parv's case, she was the most recent out of those four and she hadn't played in 10 years. Right, yeah. Yeah, and but and and on the flip side, part of me, I did also didn't. Well, one, I didn't know pregame alliances really existed, and second of all, though, go, well, going into the game with a, a structure or allegiance to certain people makes it a little bit more difficult to be nimble and adapt and flip flop and do what you need right. to do to get through. If I was locked in, I mean, poverty and I are friends outside the game, so obviously I knew poverty, and if you want to call that a pregame, great, but it's not like we said hey like let's align and then we bring this person in and that person in and but if this happened you know that none of that happened but we knew we would probably work together if we could because we trust each other outside the game so i feel like being locked into an alliance when you get into the game is could pose problems as well as um not having any alliances when you walk into the game but for anyone who's listening is planning to go on the show whatever you can do like figure it out on social media even if it's a, a newbie game and there's strangers there's ways to figure out like who's going there i'm sure you could probably do a good job just keep your ears to the floor and uh if you can get a pregame alliance going i highly suggest it because uh that's a big deal and if you go to events like a poker event or something do not talk about an alliance publicly if there's cameras around that's a, that's a horrible part now like all these returning players that are going to show up at like hearts for reality and you know uh whatever reality for diabetes and all these events that are happening you got to watch your back because that mm -hmm. information is going to be weaponized against you if any of you meet each other again in the game so just be careful don't drink too much you know wash your hands all that stuff <laughs> wash your hands yeah watch out if there's a camera exactly Was there 
Um, was there anyone who you, when you hit the beach, anyone who you hadn't met who you were really excited to meet or anybody you were really surprised to see? I didn't really met. Well, there are definitely people I met. So I've been to an event in Boston for a cancer organization and Michelle and Jeremy were there. So I met them. Obviously I knew Rob. I hadn't talked to him in 16 years. Uh, were there people, you know, I'm trying to think, uh, you know, I was excited to meet like, I actually, no, I met a bunch of the people. That's not true. Like yeah. I met Sophie once I met Kim once, but nothing like real. So I wasn't super excited to meet anyone I had watched on TV before. Well, because you're you're the you're the OG. You don't need to be excited. You don't you're yeah, like Adam Klein is excited to meet you, yeah. not the other way around. On the flip side, how excited was Adam to meet you? I guess yeah. you the question. Well, he didn't show it. If he show if you show <laughs> love by getting someone voted out, then that's a fucked up way to like <laughs> someone, right? I know Adam's probably listening, so sorry, Adam. Just joking. <laughs> just, just so you know, Adam, this is going to go on forever, forever. I log to you. I'm just every now and then I'm going to just throw you a jab. But there we go. We're, Adam and I are good. We're in a good place. He's uh, you know, a decent, a decent guy and a good friend of mine. So I'm okay. But I like ribbing on him. You gotta give him a little poke. Just gotta little, I mean, hey, you know, he's gotta... he's supposed to go out there and he's supposed to idolize the old schoolers and instead he's trying to vote all of you out. And it was BS, man. Like he knows because like we've had Adam on this show a couple times, and Adam actually listened to this show before he went and played Millennials vs. Gen X. That's how long we've been around, and that's how old Adam is right. now. And so like he knows he's breaking our hearts when he's doing this. He knows the community is getting pissed. Right. And he just does it anyway. He's just like, well, forget. Yeah. I mean, we had the same thing. We had Michelle on and we were like, you voted out Yule. Like you yeah. did that. That's that's on they you. They had a pregame right? going too, I think. Well, that's what I was actually going to say to you. How crazy is it that the guy who brings up this <laughs> poker <laughs> alliance, pretty much the one who was talking to everybody from what we're hearing. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what went on, but, uh, and you know, I'm not blaming anyone. But I also feel in terms of a strategy for people going in there, this is something I'm bringing up for the first time. And Adam should have realized this. The, this, is a t this is just as much a TV show as is, it is a game show, right? So there's a few seasons ago where his name was Mike. He had like, he came in second or third, he, red hair. He's an actor from a, a comedian actor. I don't know if you know. Oh, Mike White. Yeah, yeah, Mike yeah. White. So I remember Mike White was saying, he was, they're all in the water. He's like, listen, we got to vote Christian off tonight because you know Everyone at home loves him. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I'm like, wow, this guy's playing the game of Survivor, basing his decisions on what he feels the fans are impressed, you know, are, are feeling about a certain character on the show. So having said that, we all know Boston Rob's, a, you know, a money maker. Poverty's a money maker. You know, Kim. You know, uh, Tyson. So if Adam was smart, you got to keep the people who get the most camera time. And therefore, you're going to stay in the game longer because the camera loves these guys. And therefore, you're going to be next to them. You're going to get more camera time. They're going to get more camera time. You vote all the, off the big names. What, what happens? So as a strategy going into this, as a contestant, if you see someone else that the camera's just loving, snap, yeah. you know, align with that guy because you know, you want, they want him on the show as long as possible. And therefore you're going to stay along and go well. to out of final five. That's oh, it. Get him five, yeah. final five. Well, cause that's, I mean, when we were talking pregame, so we had done a series where we had done, you know, uh, a retrospective on all of the winners who were going to be playing. So we right. interviewed somebody from each of your seasons and we just happened to, we used Lex for Amber and T bird for you. So we talked to both, but even like when we were talking to Johnny fair playing, we were talking to, a lot of people felt that you were going to go really, really far into the game because of your social game. And ultimately it actually looks like that's what hurts you because you were the nicer of the three and Jeremy and Michelle would rather have worked with Parvati and Boston Rob because they were always going to be kind of more controversial and lowering your face and always be a little bit bigger of a target. Were you expecting that to happen when you went out there? No, I mean, I was expecting that people didn't remember how I played strategically. They're probably like, oh, nice guy, decent athlete, charitable, you know, had cancer. Like that was my story. But they're not like, oh, Ethan made this move here and he, and, you know, manipulated this person. Like that wasn't probably what people remember about me. So in that sense, I thought it was an advantage because people wouldn't know how I would play with idols and clues and tokens and all that stuff. Um, so... I think uh, Michelle and Jeremy, yeah, just saw, wanted to work. They were had the same strategy as I did, like align with people that are meat shields, bigger threats than yourself, and you're going to be like the guy behind the guy. You know, that's the role Jeremy wanted to play. He wanted to be behind Rob. Michelle wanted to be behind Poverty. Um, and that, ooh, 
boom. And that was their strategy, which was a decent strategy at the time. So I felt the same way. So I aligned with, I aligned with Poverty and Rob because one, I wanted to have an old school alliance because it's just this kind of instant connection. And I also wanted to have a foot in the new school. And that was my alliance with Adam. Mm -hmm. So obviously it backfired. And I think just the, the string started to unravel because just Adam wanted to make a big move a little bit too early. Like I would have been okay with a big move working with Adam later, but he was planning for like tribal council final three on day seven. Mm -hmm. And right. I just felt like, listen, dude, you got to slow down a little bit. Um, but you know, that's my old school attitude and he had the new school attitude, right? Yeah. And, and because again, I just watched Africa and when you're rewatching Africa, it's like, well, Diane passed out. So Diane goes home first. Jesse yeah. can't drink the water. So Jesse goes home yeah. second. And on this season it was, well, Amber is related to Boston Rob who is doing that. And Natalie and Jeremy played together. And like, it's just not the same Every from outside the game. Yeah. Yeah, like Natalie exactly. and Jeremy. Well, like uh, Jeremy, no, uh, Natalie's sisters, Jeremy's godfather, you know, Amber <laughs> and Rob know each other, uh, you know, D Wendell and, you know, Michelle dated. So like everything from outside the game was a factor inside the game. It's crazy. I'm, I'm super impressed that the editors were able to make those connections so the audience could, you know, view it and see it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I forgot what the question was. <laughs> no, I mean that was there wasn't really one. It was more of an open-ended statement. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what, what was your not to I guess like jump too far to the end, but what was your relationship with Natalie like throughout the I guess in the game and on the edge of extinction? Well, in the game, I didn't. I mean, I talked to her. You know, twenty-four hours we had a relationship. So I wouldn't even call that a relationship. It was so scrambly and frantic those first twenty-four hours. It was just nuts. Um, just, just the whole thing was, please do not let it be me. And that was, I think, for everyone. On the edge of extinction, we had a, I, what I feel was a good relationship. You know, obviously she kept me in the dark along with a lot of the other people on some of the things that she was finding and sending into the real game. Like I remember sitting at tribal council once and Tony was like, yeah, the people that send shit from the edge and blah, blah, blah. And I looked at Natalie and I'm like, can you believe they think we're sending them stuff from the edge? Oh, Meanwhile, yeah. she sent like stuff to like, you know, Sandra already and brought in Tony. And I'm like, in, inside she must have just been cracking up. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, but I I, had, I enjoyed Natalie. I had a good time with her. Obviously, I voted for her mm -hmm. at the final three. Um, and so yeah, you know, I respected her and uh the way she played the game. And you know, she was definitely playing the game out there, and that was noticeable, but I'm I was okay with that. That was one of the biggest surprises, I think, of the voting, though, was that you voted for Natalie, being that you were an old school player and, you know, the old school. I mean, just talking to any old school player, they're like, no, we want no tribe swap. We want no we want to merge at 10. Jerry starts at nine. No idols, no steal, nothing. And so for you to vote for somebody who was over on the edge of extinction pretty much the entire game, was it that you had just known her better than Michelle and Tony? Or did you really feel that, you know, she played the best game because she took advantage of everything that was thrown at her? This was a very difficult decision for me because I exactly, like you said, I am a survivor purist. I love the game. I respect the game. Uh, the biggest aspect of the game is you can't get voted out and you got to be able to vote people out, right? Natalie didn't really do either of those things in a magnificent way. Mm -hmm. However, like I never met Tony. I never shook his hand. I never smiled to him. I never talked to him. I didn't, everything I knew about Tony was from what I saw at tribal council and what people told me when they came to the edge. So for all I know, it could be real. It could be fake. I have no idea. So that was my experience of Tony. My experience of Natalie is completely different. Often we see I lived with her for 30 days um, and we struggled together. And like, she basically like, she broke out of jail. She got out of jail and made it. She's in freedom right now. And she validated my experience on the edge. I mean, it was brutal. It was difficult. It was like one of the worst and most difficult things I put myself through. And like she kind of represented that for me. And I just, when it came down to the game, clearly I'm a guy who plays with my heart, especially in this season, you know, my brain wasn't functioning that properly. And so for me, I was like, it's like, I play with my brain, I play with my heart. And I'm like, well, this, my whole thing this season is just personal relationships and mm -hmm. like, you know, open to honest authenticity, enjoy life. So I, I voted with my heart mm -hmm. and, um, you know, there are certain, you know, you can look at this, believe me, I think Tony is the deserved winner. I think he played an incredible game. He did everything perfectly. I mean, he, everyone that came to the edge loved him. 
no yeah. one one bad thing to say about the guy. So to be able to do that and vote people out in a game like this and still have people love you is a clear sign that you're doing something right. Mm -hmm. But you can also take the point of view where, yes, I'm a survivor purist old school, but the, the rules of the game for this particular season, the edge of extinction was part of it. As a fan of the show, I think it's great. I think it's bad. I don't really love it that much. As a mm -hmm. contestant, obviously, I love it because you're kind of still in the game. Um, so to actually win this game, and you're saying who has the most well-rounded game, like in theory, someone has to go to the edge and get back into the game to have experienced every aspect of this game. Tony didn't go to the edge. He doesn't know what that was like. Natalie's played in the game, went to the edge, went her way back. So if you want to look at the rules and someone who's experienced the full game in its full entirety, then you maybe need someone that's experienced the real full game. I'm just playing devil's advocate and it's an argument you can make. I don't think too many people can believe it, but like Tony has no idea. Tony, I talk to Tony now. He's like, oh, I would have never left on the end. I don't believe him. <laughs> trust me. But like, he's like, I wouldn't have, I would have, I would have just pulled a flag. I'm like, you probably wouldn't have, but like, he doesn't know how he would have responded yeah. out there. You know, if yeah. he was voted off first and then had to live out there. But I hear you. I hear all sides of the story, you know, I, I, and I, and I, and I value all those uh, opinions as well. Well, I mean, cause we've interviewed a lot of the people from, edge of extinction uh from the first edge of extinction season and you know that's what a lot of them talked about none of them say no we regret voting for chris like the people who voted for chris are like no i i wanted to vote for chris because i felt he played the best game and i feel like with you especially like you saw all of the hardship natalie had to go through whereas even somebody who came in later like when jeremy came in i know jeremy was obviously going to vote for natalie because it's essentially family but when you get that far into the game, Jeremy doesn't know that Natalie was having to carry logs up and down and all of that, where you're seeing all of that. And like you said earlier in this podcast, that was really the most old school part of the game were those types of moments. So I kind of, I, I do understand it. It was just one of those things where I'm like, I'm surprised that a winner, previous winners who had won without being voted out would vote for somebody who'd been voted out. But you know, when you talk about it, it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, the edge itself, I felt was the closest to old school survivor in the sense that it was all relationship building, you know, jury management, we actually needed to like, kind of rely on each other to survive, like build fires, get firewood, you know, all that stuff where like in the in the main game, it, it just kind of goes out the window, like everyone just understands they're gonna have to be uncomfortable for a while. There's not as much camaraderie in terms of leaning on each other to get through a day. Mm -hmm. You know, like we there is nothing to do on the edge, nothing. So like, and then you're starving and you're hungry and it, it gets dark at five. And you heard Tyson say like, the days are long, the nights are longer, mm -hmm. you know? So like, there's just a lot of time to just, I don't know, be depressed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like, you know, you, you know, you just get to know people. So for me, like, that's what Africa was like. You sat around a lot. You had a chat, one challenge a day and, uh, incredibly hot and you're incredibly hungry and uncomfortable and like you just end up talking to people and getting to know people so that suits my game you know that the edge definitely suits my game except for the fact that i, I couldn't you know win a challenge or find a fire token <laughs> yeah, <anyway>. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Well, the, i mean natalie won every single yeah. challenge <laughs> on the edge every single one not only did she win it she beat people like by a lot i mean there's one challenge the this challenge where she didn't win like this challenge oh, right that was perfect. <laughs> he was ready to go this is the only challenge i think natalie did not have a, a hand in yep. oh that rob rob had rob some got th two of them or three of them three, three of them tyson had one i got zero yeah but you got oh, the yeah. piece of paper what else do you have in those drawers? Ooh, you have good challenge. segue this are my <laughs> secret drawers that uh i don't know you can you can ask. Uh, ooh, what do I got in here? <laughs> the oh my god, is that not a log? It's the I'm clue a, from the log. Oh challenge. my god! Oh, I'm so sorry. You That's need to awesome instant PTSD right here. I was gonna say, I know you since you're up in New Hampshire. I know you probably have a huge, really cool wood pile, like for burning fires. You got to <laughs> put that log above that wood pile, like just frame it, and like every time you should only carry one log at a time over to that. Well, wood go pile. to my social. I, I I can't believe I'm even doing this right now because like <laughs> it's just so not me. But this is my social media post today. 
Oh, um, I love I it. Love I didn't it. even. I'm off Instagram right now because unlike you, who seems to be loving social media, I don't love social media. So I've been off it for like the last week. But I wish I was on so I could have seen that and prepped. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, uh, so basically, this is because I am actually working with uh, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, and we're recreating this freaking log challenge to raise oh. awareness for blood cancers. So myself and Natalie, Nick, Michelle, we are all on June 13th, and this is a plug, on June Plus. June 13th, we're doing the log challenge 2020, and this is what it exists of. Here, ready? Oh, my goodness. You got to pick a log. <laughs> <laughs> pick a log any log it could be a stick it could be a branch it could be a picture of a log on your freaking cell phone i don't care you walk 200 steps with that log then you do 20 step ups also with that log and then do that 20 times and so that's kind Anywhere, of how and any type of log whole world type of log, virtual Love like hey so like Alexa and i can partake in this I'm yeah. going to do this in New York City. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Right. So, uh, yeah. And um, it's called the uh, Leukemia Lymphoma Society does this thing called the the great, uh, the big climb. It's like they climb the um, the uh, blah, 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 Salesforce building in Seattle or, or in San Francisco, 61st, wow. 61 floors. But now it's all virtual. So Natalie and I, we did a little twist on it, paid tribute to the edge of extinction. And, you know, I live by the saying these days to never let a crisis go to waste because it's an opportunity to do some really important things. And that was taking this horrible nightmarish of a challenge, the log challenge, and turning it into something beautiful and incredible. So if you want to join our tribe, you can uh, you know, go to my social media and uh, click on the link, join the tribe. There is no fundraising required. There is no registration fee. It's all about having fun with the family, get outside on Saturday, June 13th. And I did it, you know, tested it out. It took me about at a walking at a decent like medium sized pace it took me about 25 minutes to do that. So okay. I can do that. So That's not if you're gonna work out, you might as well do this as you work out on Saturday. I, I was right? just say, so not quite as extreme though, as what you had to do on the edge, which took five or six hours. This took you 20. Can't, you can't so, drink. Yeah. We, we should be doing it fast the night before. Like, you know, <laughs> I've talked to some people and like, you know, I'm okay with using a wine bottle as your log, mm -hmm. you know, oh, love that. 20 steps, 20 step ups, 20 sips. You never know. Right. And now my girlfriend will partake. Okay. <laughs> good. So now, now we can all do it. Um, but no, so I, I, I love that. That's a great idea. That's like a really cool little twist on that. And, you know, I think that th this is something that we're seeing right now with everything being virtual and like these types of moments, there's so much focus right now on our phones, on what's going on. And, and it's great that you're taking that opportunity to really, you know, bring awareness to something positive because, because right now you have more people's attention than you probably have had since 2001, you know, and that's not because you've, you know, not because of survivor or anything like that, just because everybody is focusing on what's going on right now on their phones. Yeah, so. I, I agree. And, uh, yeah, you know, a lot of what I do is, is, has, a a charitable component to it. Um, mm -hmm. so, you know, it's kind of, I mean, even these shirts right here, uh, you know, uh, the money from these shirts goes to uh, rare cancer research. So, um, yeah, it's something I believe in. I think you can do good business, uh, you know, by doing good business. Yeah. Well, I, I want to ask you then, since you are wearing that shirt and, and, and there's just been something going around where people are kind of rooting for this old school kind of <laughs> new school season. And right, you right. said, you said, no, I'm done. I'm not playing. So if it's not going to be you, right. If you're yeah. just saying I'm done, not playing, even if they ask me, I'm not going out there in my old school survivor shirt with my whole like army of friends. <laughs> Who from your original like Africa season or even from all stars, but who we haven't seen in a while, do you think would do really well on an old school versus new school season? Ooh, on an old school versus new school season. I think uh, Kelly Goldsmith from, uh, from Africa. I think uh, T-Bird, she's, she's, she's looks like she really wants to go play again. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's clear. Um, those two, I would say all stars. I mean, I would love to see Rob Sesternino out there again. Right. Yeah. You know the know-it-all. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. <laughs> you gotta call, call yourself a know-it-all. That's you gotta you know you gotta know, you know it all. I mean, he does <laughs> know it all. Have you ever <laughs> talked to him? He knows everything about everything. He knows it all. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, I everything. love it. So I, I don't even Google stuff anymore. I just call Rob. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. You text him and he instantly responds in point one seconds. Yes. It's yes. Unbelievable. <laughs> so like instead of going, "Hey Siri," I'm like, "Hey Rob." It's just instant. Mm -hmm. It's great. Oh, you just triggered my Siri. Way to go. <laughs> hey, really? Mine was over here, not near the microphone. But hey, well, Siri, you got who won Survivor Africa? Oh, she she had no idea. 
I'm gonna, do you know who would know? Rob Sesternino. Yeah, Rob. <laughs> not the eight ball. He's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh. Rewatching Amazon and the questions he asks that magic eight ball. Wow. Right. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, absolutely. Under but yeah, I, I love the Kelly Goldsmith name drop because we were we're doing so. Uh, I know you're close with Once Upon a Time or Once Upon an Island. I call him Once Upon a Time now, but Once Upon an Island, Wes. Yeah. And he was, you know, who got us in contact with you. But we're doing a series where we're talking about each of the winners. We're doing four winners at a time. And I said a big integral part to your win that goes unnoticed is Kelly Goldsmith uh, or Brandon going against kelly goldsmith because yes. if brandon would have went with kelly goldsmith we might not be talking to you right now Correct. ethan but so you got to kind of thank kelly and also thank you know lex and brandon for that one but you know kelly was, well, that you was know, a tough vote. i mean i honestly i think kelly was on our side i don't think they would have voted for me like that was a that was a shot in the dark for tom and i because mm -hmm. i had zero relationship with brandon and tom clearly did not get along with brandon so we were just putting all 100 percent trust in lex um at that time i was not okay with that decision mm -hmm. um i still feel we would have been all right with kelly um, even if we, if we voted off Brandon and kept Kelly, I think we would have been okay with her mm -hmm. as yeah. well. I just, you know, I just have to, I always like, that's one of the most amazing votes and you bringing her name up is what makes me think of it because that was, that was a potential moment that could have been the first time we really saw like a, a power shift in survivor. Yeah. And we, and we didn't, we didn't see it because whatever Lex said to Brandon worked for three days and then it was gone, right, but right. I worked for three days. And then you were all like, no, this I think the other power shift that was really neat was the chat, like the first challenge when we kind of, when we threw the challenge to get Silas off, mm -hmm. you know, there's obviously like we were, I guess we had four. Yeah. Cause Clarence was there. Yeah. Maybe not. There wasn't a power shift there, but that was a big, that was a big thing at the time. Not too many people threw challenges. Mm -hmm. I think, I can't remember of one prior to that moment where it was just a smart move to get Silas off. So I think it was that one. And then the first time I think it was admitted was in season five because uh, she and her tribe threw the challenge to get rid of Jed. Those are name drops here, guys. But so she threw the challenge to get rid of Jed at like final 14 or something like that because they had a two person lead. But that's the first time it was actually admitted to Jeff that, yes, they were throwing a challenge because I think Jeff probably would have like killed you guys back then if he found out you were trying to throw a challenge yes right? that's true like strategy. and you touched on that earlier um we back in the back in the day mm -hmm. we're at like 100. um we're at 100. we're about 100 we like you know it was all about honor integrity keep the strong get rid of the weak where like if we tried to say that to people now we would have just been laughed off you know so like there's definitely a, a like i i'm a workhorse you know denise and i we we're in ben we we're kind of all out there just getting wood always working bustling around cleaning organizing whereas like adam literally there are days that he did not move <laughs> you know you know maybe he'd get us some water you know michelle you know she talked to coconut but like I'm all, you know, I don't know. There's the workman's mentality, the team, the we versus the me was a lot more mm -hmm. back in the day than it is now, which is fine. It's just, it's not better or worse. It's just different. It's just something I, I, was, I was used to in my game. I mean, Alexa, we became pretty close with Tommy Sheehan and Tommy Sheehan will openly tell you he's the laziest person to ever play a survivor. He did nothing. He said when people were chopping like the bamboo and stuff, he would make sure he was the one holding it. Yeah. So that it would look like he was doing something, but really it was so that he wouldn't have to waste his energy chopping the bamboo. It worked, right? He won. It works. Yeah. I don't know, yeah, man. Should you should have been lazier, I guess. I should have held more bamboo. But little <laughs> did you know. Problem. Here's the real problem. Little did you know that had you little not carried 20 logs up that mountain, <laughs> there was actually a hidden immunity idol and a free pass back into Survivor if you had just done nothing. You just you went for the, the hardworking route. All you had to do is do nothing, and you would have been yes, back in the game. A tremendous effort challenge. <laughs> yeah, love, exactly. love a tremendous effort. Unreal. Love a tremendous effort for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. So who, uh, coming into this one, who kind of surprised you out there when you actually hit the island? Was there anybody who you were expecting maybe more from or less from or weren't really expecting anything from? Um, it's just so hard in these games, like with, with the all winners edition, I was impressed with Tony. I, you know, I was surprised, uh, that they enable that he was able to continue playing as long as he did and obviously win. So I thought that someone would have gone after him at first, you know, it, it kind of, I understood the, the, I understood. No, I wasn't super surprised. You know, maybe Denise getting further than I thought she would. Um, 
you know, I would like to see, I think Sophie was playing an incredible game. Could have gone really far. Obviously it didn't work out for her, but there is just so hard to like back. back in the- <laughs> Go, you might as well. You're, by the way, you're the oldest person who's ever been on the internet ever. I mean, this is this is like <laughs> Ethan. Ethan Zahn, by the way, everybody is is seventy five right? years old. Instagram, <laughs> yeah. uh, Instagram, pa. Um, <laughs> so thank that. you. Um, well, I forgot what I was going to say. But you were going to say something about back in the day. I mean, that's all that was important. So was gonna happen. <laughs> um, any any good stories or just any good moment from the edge that we weren't showing? Nothing. Nothing. Stop <laughs> staring at each other. Nothing good ever. <laughs> um, I guess the only good thing that came out of it was I, you know, buddies with uh, a lot of cool people now, which is pretty cool. Love it's like that. the only thing I got out of that place. Um, you know, the Tyson came up with a couple fun songs. That was really fun. We, uh, I guess, slept in a cave that people used as an outhouse. Um, nice. So that was exciting behind the scenes, which, you know, we've told, shared that story before. You know, like the most exciting thing for us out there was peanut butter. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then that became a thing. Like when you know when the game is slow, when like peanut butter is the most exciting thing that happens to anyone the entire time you're out there. <clears throat> that's brutal. I mean, that's that's absolutely brutal. I, I have another question for you, though, because I know you you really struggled at times. And I know we saw a lot of you talking to poverty and being like, I don't want to quit. Like, I can't do this. I got to stick to it. Were you surprised that more people didn't quit? And also follow up to that. Were you surprised that Sandra did say, screw this, I'm out of here? <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting anyone to quit, to be honest. I thought everyone would stay there. And, you know, for me, yeah, the, the it was mentally torturous because just... <clears throat> I put a lot in effort getting ready to, to go on the show. A lot of people supported me to get ready to get on the show, including all the doctors, you know, that, mm-hmm. that made sure I, I stayed alive to be able to play and all the medicals that I got checkups. Like I had pre med, like everyone had medical. I like pre, 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 pre medical before I could get cleared to go out to this thing. And so like after all that effort and all that stuff, I was just so like, Oh, beat down when I got voted out. And as a cancer survivor, you know, there's just an extra layer of complexity and with the stress and the anxiety and not eating and sleeping. And just, uh, I really, the last time I felt that way was when I was sick with cancer. And so like, I got instantly like transported to a place that I just wasn't comfortable with. And I can't talk, what am I going to turn to uh, like Boston Rob and tell him my innermost (laughs) secrets or poverty? Like you're still playing a game out here. Right. So when you're going through these moments, you're by yourself. You are literally isolated from the world and isolated from the people around you. And that's similar with cancer, you know, like it's, it's a really crazy disease and it's a very isolating disease. So just all that put together and the stress and like, you know, I didn't have any uh, CBD. So I was just all, you know, things were just going downhill. So it was <laughs> just terrible. For me. Mentally, it was like torturous out there for me. And uh, I just thought I was giving myself cancer. It's really, and, was but, but, but when you were actually in the game, you if you if you would have went further in the regular game, challenges, all that, you think you would have been fine? Yeah, you're distracted, you're exciting, you're actually competing in challenges. Like, that's my game. I love challenges. I love the survival aspect. I love the challenge aspect. You know, the the strategy was something I would was going to figure out. You know, obviously, I didn't play it at a level like that. So just really disappointing. Uh, I just didn't, didn't really get anything going. You know, there's nothing because it was just so quick. Yeah. And I think that was, I think that was kind of the bummer for a lot of fans too. And it's not like, Oh, you disappointed us, but it was the bummer that we wanted to see like, what was, what were you going to be able to do to evolve in this game? And what was Amber going to be able to do? And kind of what sucked about the situation is even in game changers or not game changers, but in second chance, we had to see Kimmy Kappenberg go really, really far, which was interesting to see because we didn't know what she would do. And even though she was really the only one from the old school who went really far, we still at least got to follow somebody and be like, wow, they played season two. And now look at them in season 31. We didn't really have that on this season. There was nobody to be, yes, that's our person who made the merge and they're going to figure it out. They're going to adapt. You know, they're going to have that exciting, even if they get sixth place, at least they adapt it. Yeah, no, that you're absolutely right. It didn't happen. So yeah. uh, it's unfortunate <laughs> for all yeah. of us old schoolers that it didn't happen, but uh, great for the new schoolers. Absolutely. You have anything else in those drawers that you want to throw at us? I, you keep turning. I whatever you want. I I'm know. curious. I'm, what's, I'm waiting for Big Tom to jump out of one of those. He's just hanging out in there. drawers with one log in each of them. <laughs> I got uh, here is uh, this is the machete from the Edge of Extinction. Nice. Oh, wow. 
It's pretty awesome. Like you, you really want out get getting to take that home. That takes yeah, sense. I did. And this is the this is the machete from uh, Africa. Wow, oh. what a comparison. Yeah. Oh, here's a fun comparison for you. So okay, so that this is amazing. <laughs> I love, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Big Tom's about to pop out. It's gonna happen. <laughs> Him and his boil are just gonna attack this. Oh my right god! Now. <laughs> These are all my buffs. Got some buffs. Oh. I love this. I want to expand the screen and have this. Just was, I know room. it's it's like one of those. Remember that show, like one verse a hundred, and there was like a hundred TV screens up on like a wall. That's what this actually is. We're only seeing like eight it's of these the drawers, but it's like thousands. There's everything. This goes up to the ceiling. My ceilings are twenty feet high. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so, just for example, like you know, the way the show has progressed, you know, here is like you saw you saw me show this challenge. This is a challenge. I mean, this is a, a clue. Right, yeah. You know, printed on computer paper, ripped on the edges to move. It. Now this is like a clue from Africa, right? Oh my god! Parchment paper, hand drawn, like aged perfectly, like on purpose. Uh, wow. You know, still smells like, you know, elephant yes. shit. You know, <laughs> so that's just so a little bit like water. The detail in which they went back back in was the day. Handwritten? Yeah, handwritten. Yeah, on some paper. intern. Oh. Went through calligraphy school to get paid ten dollars an hour to write that forty-five yeah, page. All of their names. Yeah, all of our That's names. incredible. And like you know, they still do. Trust me, they challenge department. The art department's great, but this is like you know, this is a wallet they would give us where we got for the food auctions back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the day, right, right. Fun. And then you know, made buffs with corporate sponsors. Mm -hmm. That doesn't we happen anymore. <laughs> 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 that, I mean, it's Amazing. it's crazy too that you were able to collect as much as you have. Or did you just kind of come across it? Did you buy some of it? Like, what what did you end up doing to make sure you got so much? Because I feel like a lot of people who play they'd struggle to even get their torch or something. Let me just just a this bit way. against a stranger on eBay. <laughs> uh, it just uh, yeah, it just helps to have big hair. That's how I snuggle all this stuff up. I just put it, just hide it in your, in your hair on the way out. That you know, quarantine this, haircut. Exactly. <laughs> there was no security checks back uh in you know back in the day when we were flying around in 2001 pre 9/11. Yeah. That's right. true. Take that's true. Plane. <laughs> yeah, cuz you you were yeah, you were right before 9/11. That's that's back in the day. I mean, that is back in the day. You flew out to to Kenya pre 9/11 to play Survivor. That's yes. unreal. Well, There's people Yeah. I was just gonna say, there's people listening right now who aren't alive when 9/11 happened. I'm just I'm just letting you know, Ethan. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's uh I hope they go back and watch the older seasons if they were not alive. Uh, check out. The, yeah. But, uh, they, the re another reason I don't think I'm done with Survivor, and I did not bring this to my attention. Someone else brought this to my attention. But Survivor Africa, 9-11. Survivor All-Stars, Tsunami in mm -hmm. Thailand. And then now Survivor 40, the pandemic. Like, it's time I stop playing Survivor. There's a global <laughs> event every time I go on this freaking show. Was there anything when you oh went on God. Amazing Race or was like Amazing Race, it was like, oh, we actually had the best stock market year That's and like me. people were yeah. living in peace. Like, is that what was going on during the Amazing Race? Should you just play the Amazing Race all the time? No, I got back from the Amazing Race and then I got diagnosed with cancer again. Oh my God. Oh, geez. Thanks okay. for bringing it up, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. No. play oh. any reality game ever again. <laughs> and I'm going to leave now, Alexa. You finish this out with Ethan. I'm out because. <laughs> yeah, well, this has been great. Yeah, yeah no, so when I back from race and, uh, and I was diagnosed re-diagnosed in um august and then uh wow. yeah so i got back in august because i got back in august I, see i forget the timeline but when you had played with jenna it was right after you had gone into remission if i remember correctly and jenna's mom had passed away right yeah that's how time after that so okay. the timeline was africa was 2001 uh, all stars 2004 cancer 2009 amazing race 2011 cancer 2011 okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Wow. I don't know, man. Don't like no big brother. Don't you're done with CB. <laughs> you're done with CBS shows. You want to do like deal or no deal or something. That's fine. Has anyone done the trifecta? Amazing no? race, big brother and survivor. Nobody's ever done it. The closest is Natalie and Hayden almost did all of them, but then him and Ty didn't go on the amazing race for some reason, but they were supposed oh, to go. On yeah. The maybe season. that's, that's my ticket. Maybe they have those like weird shortened versions of big brother now. Right. Yeah. Like it's like one week that's or something. Perfect. That's what I can handle one week. Anything over that. I'm done. You're done. That's <laughs> it. You're, you're forget, forget about it. Um, 
Yeah. So, so what? What else, Alexa? You look like you had something you wanted to say, right? There. No, I, Ethan. I know. I know you're on a. I know you're on a time limit. So I just want to make sure we're hitting everything. Everything yeah. that you. I know that I mean, everything. You even let me dig in the drawers. You. We've hit every. Oh, the last thing. Last plug. Selfless. Mm -hmm. Self. Not selfless. It is selfless and selfish plug. Uh, these shirts right here. This is like last call. They're going away. So once mm -hmm. these are gone, they're gone forever. And uh, so if you want them, now would be the time to do it. It's got this logo on the back. This commemorative survivor logo right there and uh money goes to rare cancer research but uh once they are done they are done so this is the uh the last call and for where can we find those because i should probably buy one since i i yes. think thailand's a better season than some of the seasons we've watched that's how much i like old school and then survivor. i have another shirt coming out which is a uh, more present to what's going on in the world and applicable to all your fans who are just you know here we go we got old school reality <laughs> oh there we go and this Very all the money from this awesome. benefits um uh hearts of reality which is a, a charity in Love florida that. that a lot of survivors are participating yeah that's fantastic yeah and and you know so go find those i think i gotta buy one of those for sure but then sure. also i do want to give a shout out here to uh Wes. sunday who was yes. just unfortunately mm -hmm diagnosed with uh, two forms of cancer was in people and everything. And we've had Sunday on a lot. Sunday, mm -hmm. I think is our number one person who's been on in terms of how many times she's been on our podcast. So we love Sunday and we're really upset by the news, but you know, we're, we, we love you and we're, we're hoping everything turns out. Okay. Yes. Um, I met Sunday at a uh, survivor, like fantasy camp, like uh, in Maine where a bunch of people would come and play a game and she was there and really incredibly lovely woman. And mm -hmm. yes, I'm sending all my love and light and cancer crushing vibes to Sunday. Yes. So, good yes. Yeah. Kick, kick its ass Sunday. Definitely. We love Definitely. you. And you know, you know, it's, it's just, it's brutal, but yeah, I just saw that yesterday and I was like, damn, but you know, but, um, so other than that, Ethan, do you have anything else that you want to throw in here or we got, we, we plug every, I usually plug us at the end, but you have like five things that no, I'm rather. not here to plug. Well, I guess it was your little plug, but <laughs> no, log, ch log challenge Saturday, June 13th shirts, Ethan's on com. There you go. Oh, love that. I love that. Ethan's on com. <laughs> love that. Um, go ahead, Alexa, take it home then. Well, so, um, there's no alexapappas.com, unfortunately, but you can follow us on social media, Survivor Specialist, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, for those of you who are looking for something to do in this potentially very long off season, every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, we are talking with Once Upon an Island who connected us with Ethan. He's been super fantastic. We're talking about every single winner. It's taking 10 weeks and it's going to be really exciting. So, or it has been really exciting. So we've done it twice already. So make sure to tune into that. Make sure to do the log slash wine slash stick challenge. This weekend. <laughs> um, and Ethan, thank you so much for coming on. We had a really great time and good luck with your AMA tonight. Hope it goes well. Awesome. Thank you guys. This has been really fun. I appreciate it. Thanks, Ethan. Later.